What's up guys and welcome back to this career mode and we're in now January, we're in the 2nd of January, it's the very start of January and uh, a few things have happened over the last few weeks, we have uh, dropped a bit of ground, we've uh, fallen down to 4th place in the, uh, the, t in the, the championship, we've dropped a couple of points on the people ahead, which is annoying because we, we had a chance to get much better, Brighton lost a game finally um, and we just couldn't capitalise, we, uh, we lost I think one game but we drew like far too many as you can see i've conceded i think five goals in the last four weeks which is not good at all but we're still up there we're still in that sort of top echelon of the teams we're buzzing around automatic promotion places so uh yeah we're not too far away um there have been a few developments within the team itself uh not so much by me but by other players like for instance luke conlon saying that he doesn't really want to play for us anymore. He kind of—I think he wants a loan. I don't think he wants to be sold out, right? But it's kind of annoying because he's pretty much my only replacement left back. I have a couple of players who can play left back, but he's like a proper actual left back. Um, so when Kawomio doesn't play, he plays, and it's annoying that he now doesn't want to be playing for us because he doesn't feel he's getting enough time. Um, which he's not going to get because he's his second choice, but that's pro it's probably come about given that he was the first choice and now he's the second choice, so you know it's it is what it is. But um, Callagher as well is, wants to be played a bit more, which I played him in the last game, so hopefully that will help him be a bit calmer about the situation. But there has been a couple of other players who want to leave. Number one, Dixon. Dixon wants to leave. He uh, doesn't feel he's getting enough time, which I'm completely happy with. He's not very good. But as you can see, Borinho has picked up an injury. He hyperextended his knee. He total buckled it backwards, and uh, now he's out four weeks, which isn't. It could, it could be much worse, to be honest. With a hyperextended knee, it's only four weeks. But um, yeah, we uh, we're gonna have to look for a replacement right slash left mid, somebody like a winger who could play get ping balls into the box but equally be able to uh, finish so I'm gonna have a look I've got the scouts out looking for somebody but they've not come back yet so hopefully we find somebody who's uh, capable of fitting straight in I'm gonna look for somebody who's quality first team around about the high 70 marks so that you know they give a bit of competition to uh, Brino and Kuomia somebody who can actually take it to them and uh, really uh, mix things up you know and, and put a real bit of competition into the team for uh, for places so we'll see what we can come up with. Rojas has grown on me a little bit. A little bit. But not much. Not much. But we have now got Moreno Barbosa back from uh, back from injury, as is Reese Turner. They were both injured for a while, which uh, was well, an absolute nightmare. But they're now back, and we're, uh, we're good to go. Um, I think that's it, really, in terms of what people... I don't think anybody else really wants to leave. Um... I think we might send somebody out on loan, possibly Cole Stockton or Reese Turner. Probably Stockton, to be honest, just to free up the uh, the places because they're going to get annoyed at some point. Because I'm only playing one striker a game and I've got four, so I'm I'm going to have to get rid of one or two um, at some point in this career. Um, Dixon set transfer list. Yeah, I've also got these two lads who are original Morecambe players who have got pretty much no potential. Um, they're not going to grow. Uh, even though they are very young, they're, they're not going to get much better than they already are. So I've stuck them on the transfer list. They're probably not going to get anything. I think they've only got like six months left in their contract. So if I get like two quid for them, then it's probably a good bit of business. But I think that pretty much wraps it up for now. We'll join back on transfer deadline day and uh, we'll see what's happening with the transfers who have managed to sign in or uh, if I have managed to find anybody. Um, or if I haven't found anybody, in which case we're in a probably quite a bad situation because we'll only have like one winger. So, um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. We'll, well, I'll meet you there. Right, welcome to transfer deadline day, and uh, a few things have changed over the last month or so. We've done pretty well. We won like two or three of our. We've won quite a few of our games. So, I have changed. Oh, that's not that's not right. Um. Over the last couple of games, I've changed to the very trendy three at the back. Well, actually, it's five at the back, but if you play three and then a midfield five with two wing backs further up the field is technically left and right mids, as basically every like three slash five at the back is actually played. 
your wingers, like your midfielders, who are supposed to be fullbacks, like wing backs, just constantly stay in the middle of the field and tend to come in in front of your centre backs, which makes absolutely zero sense. Even though you're telling them to stay back and stay wide, they'll just do whatever the fuck they want, which is an absolute disaster. But anyway, enough uh, talking about how FIFA's logic when it comes to defensive wing backs doesn't work. And back to the point. I have changed to this back three formation and it has been working very well. Now, I have been getting a lot of offers for Farrell, Kevin Farrell, and uh, I'm I'm actually very tempted to let him go and bring in somebody who is very defensive minded, somebody who can sit behind Lewis Baker in that midfield and just take up all the, uh, just sop up every little attack that comes this way. Dennis Moraes has been doing a very good job, but he's the only player I have who's very good at this job. Nobody else seems to be that good. If I put in Tavares, he goes forward too much and Will Diggs the same. He's not defensive enough. So I need somebody who's very good just sitting back and just taking out every attack that comes my way. Um, also, because I've had to lose uh, Dixon, yeah, Dixon, uh, because he's gone, he went for like 300 grand and I got like 150 for him in, from the board, which was absolutely amazing. Um, I now need a right mid and um, I've been, I've sent out the, the scouts, the feelers have gone out and I have a lad that I have put a bid in for. Um, and we'll see if he comes. Hopefully he does because <laughs> we've only got a few hours left. Um, as you can see over here. Juventus have signed Christian Eriksen for near enough 60 million. Um, Arsenal have bought some lad from uh, from Rostov for 33.5 million. Um, and Thomas Lamar has gone from Monaco to Real Madrid for 31 million pounds, which is uh, pretty hefty. We did just loan out Cole Stockton, as I said I would at the start of the video. Um, he's gone, he's on loan at Gillingham. And uh, yeah, it takes us down to this three strikers, which is perfectly fine. We only have space for one. Occasionally I might play two up top uh, when we're really attacking but it's not really necessary to have four on the books. Um, I want to just check something actually because I think something a bit weird happened. Yeah, something very weird happened. Arsenal signed Mario Balotelli for how much did they sign him for? 19 million pounds. 19 million pounds for 28 year old Mario Balotelli. He's only 81 rated as well. So that that was a thing. They also signed this lad from Rostov who has some pretty tasty looking stats, but they did pay 33.5 million for him, which, although he's 24, is probably the reason for his price. He doesn't seem like he's all that worth it, to be quite honest. So that was the weirdness that happened. Um, I saw that and I was like, what, what is going on here? Arsenal signing Balotelli, but um, yeah. So I have, a, I have a bid in, so we'll find out if uh, this bid is successful or not. Um, hopefully it is. I put in slightly less than they asked for. Um, oh, they've accepted it. Four million, which is not too bad. He wants, that's fine. Um, four years, off from five. He will be a, an important first-team player, but he won't be our first first-team player, if that makes any sense. Um, I also put in inquiries, because obviously if I want to get a proper defensive midfielder, I've put in inquiries for uh, Adam Nagy, a um, Hungarian player, plays for Bologna, um, and they want 17.5 million, and I also put in a bid for uh, Ndidi, for, uh, from Genk, and he they want 16.5 million. Um, so, yeah, that's quite a lot of money. But I do have the funds. So, And if I sell uh, Farrell as well, I should get about 7 or 8 million, I think, for him. Possibly might be able to push it. But I'm waiting to see if a bid comes in for him or not. I'm hoping a bid comes in for him. Um, right, okay. Sar has joined us. Accept that. I might just buy one of them anyway. But I'm not too sure which one I want. <laughs> Um, yeah, I haven't got the best of stats on them, but I know they're both good, and I know they've both got mad potential. Um, they're both really good stamina-wise, and they've got really good like um, tackling, obviously, and and uh, he's got really good ball control and dribbling. He's got a five-star weak foot, 
and he's only 23, whereas in DD he's only 22. He's fast, he's got sprint speed, uh, he, but he's a better passer. He's not like agile, but he's better at passing. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking going for Ndidi more than Nagi. They both look good, but he's cheaper, and he's younger, and he probably does the job that I'm looking for much better because he's quick and he's got mad stamina and he's, uh, yeah, he's a good tackler and passer as well. You can see there: stamina, sprint, uh, stand tackle, sprint speed, shot power. Long shot, uh, long pass, and short pass. So, yeah, he's basically everything I need from a holding midfielder. Right, we're going for it. We're putting in a bid. Hopefully, it comes off. They want sixteen and a half million. They can have twelve and a half million. We could offer Farrell. The thing with Farrell, right? He's very good, and he's a good rated player, seventy-three rated. He's only twenty-two. But the biggest issue I have with him is that his reactions are about like I think he's got about forty on his reactions, and he's he's got good ball control and, and agility and stuff. But without reactions, they're basically useless because he always just like gets the ball taken off him before he has a chance to actually do anything with the ball. So he he's he's good, but um he was good for the chat for League Two and League One Championship. He's starting to be pretty annoying. And when we go into the Premier League next season, providing we get a, uh, getting promoted, we need somebody much higher class than he is. And I'm thinking, playing this three at the back formation, having Baker in midfield as a playmaker, and then somebody solid behind him just to just to soak up all of the pressure, and somebody like Ndidi does that amazingly. And there's just no space left for Farrell, because we're not playing a cam anymore, so he's kind of not really that necessary. And you know what? I'm going to offer 10 million in Farrell and see what they say. Might get rejected, probably will get rejected. Don't have much time left to be honest, only like 8 hours left on the transfer deadline day, so I need to uh, get on with it and hopefully they accept it. Right, they've not accepted it. Apparently they're not interested in Farrell. Right, okay, well they're, they're still. I'm still going to offer them. Right, try that, just see. See what happens, see if they accept that or not. Oh, Manalas has just gone to Real Madrid for 47 and a half million. Oh, they've accepted. Decent, right. He wants... Why would I be offering him 16 grand a week when he... <laughs> He's actually going to take a reduce in salary. He's currently getting 16 grand a week. At Ghent. And, uh... Ghent? Genk? Genk? Ghent? can't remember which one it is. Uh, Genk, yeah. Um... And he's only asking for 15 grand a week coming here. I will offer him a five year contract. He's going to be a crucial first player. First team player. There we go. Right. Hopefully. He says yes to all that. I've offered him everything he wants. But yeah, as you can see, Manolas. That's not. Go back. Manolas has just moved to Real Madrid. It's a big money move. Not too bad. Currently uh, linked with. Uh, well, he's supposed to be moving to Zenit in real life at the moment, but. Apparently Chelsea might be looking at him, so... Um, right, so he wants more money. Right, okay, fine. I'll offer you 20 grand. Make sure he knows he's a crucial first-team player and he'll be playing every game. I mean, surely... A, the Belgian League to the champions, uh, to the championships, not that big a... Um, a jump, really. I put an offer for Kevin Farrell, but we're not going to uh, do anything on that, because... He's part of this agreement. Hopefully he accepts this contract. I'm really... Yay! 20 grand a week. Right. Welcome aboard, son. Get yourself on the bus. Come on. We have got ourselves a top-class holding midfielder. Right. Let's get him into our first team. Where are we going? Reese Turner, you can get yourself down the bench. He's 79 rated. It's not bad at all. So he's uh, he's one rating less than uh, than Baker, but he fits in the team perfectly with that rating, like just in the sort of high seventies. Now, when it comes to the summer transfer window, there will be more signings. Um, Premier League, not much of a uh, chance with a team like this, especially defence like this. I mean, we're playing three at the back, and they are 
all very young players and going to get much better over time. Um, but we will need improvements. So we will make some marquee signings, in particular in defence, and with a goalkeeper. Fernandez has now become our number one goalkeeper, 71 rated. Um, Nizik is only 70 rated. I had a look at their stats. Nizik has got better positioning, but basically everything else, uh, apart from kicking, which basically means absolutely fuck all in FIFA, nobody cares about goalkeeper kicking, um, his positioning's better than uh, Fernandez, but Fernandez has better on pretty much everything else. So I've got him in. He's now my number one goalkeeper. Um, but we will be signing a like, proper marquee goalkeeper in the summer. That is that is an absolute certainty. Um, because a 71 rated goalkeeper is definitely not going to cut it when it gets to the Premier League level. Um, so yeah, that'll be happening. I'm not sure who. Might have to be quite an old boy. See if we can get somebody on the, get somebody on the cheap. See if there's any ridiculous last minute transfers. Doesn't look like it. Brighton and Hove Albion just spent four and a half million, or four point two million pounds, on some lad from Atletico Madrid. Surprising. Talking of Atletico Madrid, fucking Watford have signed Juan Fran. Don't know how they managed to pull that one off, but they've got Juan Fran as his right as a right back now, which is very interesting. Um, <laughs> we've spent seventeen and a half million pounds on a Championship side. Um, are we the biggest spenders in the championship? We probably are. Unless West Brom have only spent 7.2. They already had a quality team though. Yeah. Looks like we have uh, been the biggest spenders. Brighton and Hove Albion, they spent all their money on one player. Um, we did spend a lot of money, but we... Uh, we're kind of forced to with Dixon deciding that he was wanting to leave and uh, I got rid of the two lads that were here from the start of my career who basically mean absolutely nothing um, I also sent um, that Henriquez boy out on loan as well um, just to get some experience he's a, a left mid um, and uh, obviously Farrell was part of the uh, Ndidi transfer but yeah, that will probably sum it up. That's the end of transfer deadline day. We have uh, a grand total of £221 million was spent today. And uh, yeah, a lot of it by us. Um, okay. Oh, for the love of Christ. Two months. One day after the transfer window closes, Ethan Davis decides that he's going to fucking tear his hip flexor, whatever that is, and fucking bloody, what does he think he is, like an 80-year-old breaking his hip? And he's going to be out for the next two months. Two months! Absolute piss take. Right, well, Steve Val Stephen Valley, or whatever his name is, the other centre-back I've got, you're going to be getting more more games, lad. That's, that's an absolute certainty now that we've lost our... Uh, Lost our right back, although I have been playing him as a centre back in this formation because he can play as a centre back. Dean Winard will have to play more often, and uh, Sandoval, that's the boy. He's going to have to uh, fill in. But it's a good thing we've now got a defensive midfielder in front of them to protect them. Um, although, actually, playing this lad, he's an absolute boss. Absolute boss. I don't know if I'll find the clip. Probably I'll try and find the clip. He absolutely tore past like some defenders. I don't know why he was in this position, but he was on the edge of the opposite team's box, and he somehow managed to go past two defenders, and he totally fucked his shot up. But the, the way he managed to just go through the defence was absolutely staggering. As uh, I think Lewis Baker's just gone up a point. 81 now. Um, but yeah, he was he was on fire that game. So I've, uh, I've kept him in the team, and uh, yeah, over um, Wakefield. But... There will be a lot of uh, rotation going on. Anyway, this video is probably getting a bit too long now, so I shall end. Um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this video and the mad transferness that has been going on, especially Balotelli to Arsenal, that was outrageous. Um, yeah, and then give it a thumbs up and subscribe as well if you're new around here and want to watch more of my content. Um, then hit that big red square button below us that says subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next week. So until then, cheerio! cheerio.